Those who left their mark in the depths of history, no matter how different their methods, armor, and weapons, all possessed an unshakable spirit and a will to fight. Each of their names is etched in the history books. Today, we delve into the world of the deadliest and most feared soldiers from different eras and cultures. Spartan Hoplites The Spartan state in ancient Greece was renowned for producing some of history's most elite soldiers. Born into a society that glorified strength and courage, the lives of Spartan hoplites were intrinsically woven with the art of war. The agoge, Sparta's rigorous training regime, was mandatory for every male Spartan. Beginning at the age of seven and continuing until their early twenties, this training molded them into disciplined, hardened warriors. This education was not just physical, but mental as well. Young warriors were subjected to food deprivation and harsh living conditions to instill resilience, self-reliance, and toughness. Spartans fought in a battle formation known as the phalanx, where soldiers fought in close ranks, forming a shield wall. Each soldier was armed with a long spear, a short sword, and a round bronze shield. The phalanx was a virtually impenetrable moving wall of flesh, capable of withstanding enemy charges and pushing back with deadly force. This battle formation was at the heart of Spartan military strategy, and its effectiveness was proven in countless battles. Their military prowess was evidenced in the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BC, where King Leonidas and a mere 300 Spartans held back the massive Persian army of King Xerxes I for three days. The battle's fame still endures, an epic tale that continues to inspire movies and television series. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the Spartans' valiant stand became a symbol of courage against overwhelming odds. Spartan hoplites were also renowned for their strict adherence to their military code. The Spartan motto, with it or on it, reflected their commitment to the cause. The shield, critical to the phalanx's success, was to be either brought back from battle with the warrior or carried home on his dead body. Losing one's shield in battle was a disgrace worse than death for a Spartan. The Spartans' strict battle discipline and superior fighting skills had a profound psychological impact on their enemies. Many opponents were mentally defeated before the physical confrontation even began. The word Spartan came to represent fearlessness, discipline, and military skill. Spartan hoplites were among the deadliest warriors in history. Their impact was such that, even today, two millennia later, their name is synonymous with unmatched courage and martial prowess. The Immortal Persians The Immortals, as the elite force of the Persian Empire, have earned their place as some of the most feared warriors in history. Known as Amartaka in Old Persian, meaning immortal, this force was the standing army of the Persian Empire, serving as the Emperor's personal guard and acting as the main infantry unit during wartime. The Immortals were a group that always numbered exactly 10,000. When a soldier died or was severely injured, another was immediately appointed to take his place, keeping the number constant. This perpetuated the illusion of immortality. This psychological element functioned as a strategic advantage in intimidating their enemies. Immortals were selected through athletic competitions held in all cities of the Persian Empire. These chosen individuals were athletic and tall, and they were fed special nutrients for two years, and received swordsmanship, archery, horsemanship, and language training from masters from all over the world to become strong soldiers. Each immortal was a versatile soldier, multilingual, and capable of using an array of weapons and riding horses, making them a mobile and flexible force on the battlefield. After learning all the intricacies of the art of war, for trial purposes, they would participate in wars in remote regions for two, three years, and then, as master warriors, they would join this unit. The immortals were heavily armed. They wielded a variety of weapons, including short spears, swords, and bows. They also had wicker shields and scale armor for their defense, adding to their offensive capabilities. This variety of weapons and armor enhanced their versatility. The immortals' capabilities were showcased in various Persian conquests. They were key in King Cyrus the Great's establishment of the Persian Empire. The Immortals played significant roles in battles against the Babylonians and Lydians. At the Battle of Thermopylae, the Immortals faced off against the Spartan Leonidas and his soldiers. 
Their numbers and reputation for invincibility did not win them the battle, but their relentless fight against the Greeks was immortalized in history. During the reigns of King Darius and King Xerxes I, the immortals were also prominent. They fought on the front lines in suppressing revolts and in the invasion of Greece. The immortals were not only famous for their fighting skills, but also for their appearance. They were clad in rich and luxurious uniforms and often wore jewelry and gold. This attire was a psychological tool to display their wealth and power to their enemies and to demonstrate their prestigious status within Persian society. Roman Centurions In military history, Roman centurions have earned a reputation as some of the most disciplined and effective soldiers in history. Forming the backbone of the Roman army, these warriors were known for their exceptional leadership qualities, unwavering discipline, and impressive combat skills. A centurion was the commander of a military unit, a century, which typically consisted of 80 to 100 soldiers. However, this number could vary. The term centurion is derived from the Latin word centum, meaning 100. Centurions were professional officers in the Roman army who had proven their skills on the battlefield and their ability to command troops effectively. Becoming a centurion was no easy feat. It required years of military service, demonstrated bravery and competence in battle, and the ability to lead other soldiers. Centurions had to be disciplined enough to inspire their troops even in dire situations and lead them with composure while also protecting them. Centurions played a key role in the expansion of the Roman Empire, which spanned three continents. It is impossible to talk about Rome's military victories without emphasizing the contributions of the centurions. They led by example, fighting at the forefront of battles, and their leadership often made the difference between victory and defeat. One of the most famous centurions, Lucius Varenus, served under Julius Caesar during the conquest of Gaul. Caesar identifies Varenus and another centurion, Titus Pullo, as icons of courage and military skill. Centurions were easily distinguishable on the battlefield. They wore a distinctive helmet with a transverse crest that made them visible during battle and allowed their men to follow them. They also carried a vine staff, symbolizing their rank and authority. In addition to their combat and leadership skills, centurions were known for their strict discipline. They were responsible for punishing those who violated the military code and ensuring their soldiers adhered to rigorous training routines. As much as centurions were known for their toughness and strict adherence to rules, they were also famous for their care for their soldiers. They shared the hardships with their soldiers, creating solidarity and mutual respect among them. This bond was key to maintaining the high morale and effectiveness of the Roman army. In the broader context of history, centurions represented the might of the Roman Empire. They played a key role in shaping an empire that lasted for centuries and left a lasting mark on the world. Fierce Vikings Among the most feared and deadly warriors in history, the Viking berserkers certainly stand out. These legendary Norse warriors were renowned for their exceptional fighting skills, seemingly superhuman strength, and fearsome, trance-like state in battle. The term berserker comes from the Old Norse language, often translated as bear shirt or bear coat. This may stem from the warrior's practice of entering battle wearing bearskin cloaks, symbolizing the animal's strength and ferocity. However, the origin of the word is uncertain with some suggesting the term means to go into battle without armor. In many sources, it is also accepted as fierce warrior, the one who has gone mad. Vikings are described in detail in ancient saga literature and poems. The Vikings, who were believed to go mad during battle, were called wild gangsters. In this state, they were said to exhibit inhuman strength, immunity to fire and iron, and a terrifying rage that made them dangerous and unpredictable opponents. The exact nature of the berserker state has been much debated among historians and scientists. Some believe it is linked to spiritual or religious practices. Berserkers were believed to invoke the spirit of animals such as bears or wolves, channeling their power and ferocity. Others suggest it may be related to the ingestion of hallucinogenic substances or even psychological conditions. Despite these uncertainties, the reputation of the Viking berserkers is undeniable. They served as shock troops in Viking raids, 
leading the charge with terrifying war cries. Their reputation was such that even their allies found them unsettling. One could never predict what a berserker might do during his battle frenzy. Viking berserkers were also renowned for their personal fighting style. They excelled in displays of individual strength and courage rather than organized military formations. This made them invaluable in champion fights or single combat. However, the same qualities that made them feared and respected also led to their decline. As Scandinavian societies began to centralize and form more organized military forces, unpredictable and uncontrollable soldiers began to be seen as a liability. Towards the end of the Viking Age, they disappeared altogether. But the legacy of the Viking berserkers continues to fascinate and intrigue. They have become a symbol of the fierce, fearless spirit of the Viking Age. Medieval Knights The Middle Ages were characterized by the rise of knights. These heavily armored soldiers' reputation for bravery, honor, and martial skill was legendary. Shaped by chivalry and driven by feudal obligations, these knights were a pivotal factor in shaping the military, social, and cultural landscapes of the medieval world. The journey to knighthood was arduous. Young boys of noble birth were sent to the castles of other lords from the age of seven. They were taught etiquette, religion, and social norms, while also learning the basics of combat. Around the age of 14, they would begin serving directly under knights. After learning more advanced combat skills and participating in battles, they would become squires. Upon reaching the age of 21, if a squire had proven his medal, he would be ceremonially knighted, taking the knightly oath. Knights throughout history used a variety of weapons, including swords, maces, and lances, which they learned to wield with exceptional skill through rigorous training. They donned chainmail or plate armor, providing protection on the battlefield, which comes to mind when we think of a knight. The main element of the knights was the war horse, a strong animal of good breed, trained for war. The sight of a knight carrying a lance on the battlefield on a war horse was a sight that could terrify enemies. Perhaps that's why, while many warriors are fading into oblivion, the image of the medieval knight continues to remain iconic. Ottoman Janissaries The Janissaries were the elite infantry units of the Ottoman Empire. They were renowned for their discipline, cohesion, and superior fighting skills. Their unique recruitment and rigorous training methods set them apart from contemporary military forces. Their impact on the battlefield and within the empire made them one of the most feared and respected soldiers in history. The Janissaries were first established in the 14th century by Murad I as a force loyal only to the Sultan. Through the Devsirme system, children from the Balkans were recruited and entered into the service of the Ottoman state. This method guaranteed their undivided loyalty to the Sultan, while also fostering a sense of unity and brotherhood among the troops. Janissary training was harsh but comprehensive. Thus, over time, the children were transformed into disciplined, effective soldiers. Training included physical conditioning, weapons practice, and tactics, as well as military arts. At the same time, they were trained in various crafts and trades that supported logistics and boosted the empire's economy. This balanced education made them unique. The Janissaries were divided into regiments called Orta, each with a specialized function on the battlefield. They were among the first troops to utilize firearms, and their proficiency with rifles and cannons gave them a significant advantage. Despite being classified as infantry, they were also trained for war for situations that required mobility. The Janissaries' distinctive uniforms, martial music, and fighting skills have been depicted in various works of art and literature. The Janissaries were undoubtedly one of the deadliest and most feared military forces in history. Their influence shaped not only the Ottoman Empire, but also the course of military history. Samurai Warriors Among the most revered and fearless warriors in history, the samurai of feudal Japan stand out. With their unmatched combat skills, unwavering discipline, and absolute loyalty to their lords, these iconic figures represented Japan's elite warrior class for many eras, leaving an indelible mark on the country's military, social, and cultural fabric. The term samurai derives from the Japanese word Samurao, meaning to serve. 
this perfectly captures the essence of these warriors who dedicated their existence to their feudal lords or rulers. Their emergence dates back to the 10th century, the Heian period, but the era in which the samurai truly came to the forefront was the Sengoku period, dominated by civil wars. Training for a samurai was no ordinary feat. It was an intense process, deeply intertwined with physical prowess, strategic intellect, and the moral and ethical dimensions of warfare. From childhood, they were rigorously trained in archery, horsemanship, and swordsmanship. The katana, a curved blade renowned for its sharpness and precision, was not merely a tool of war for the samurai. It was a revered symbol of their identity, embodying honor and the eternal warrior spirit. An integral part of the samurai was the code of Bushido, or the way of the warrior. This code extolled principles such as loyalty, courage, honor, and impeccable personal integrity. This code was not just about the battlefield. It was a comprehensive life philosophy that argued that a warrior's moral compass was equally important to their combat skills. Although the age of the samurai has long since passed, their legacy lives on, vibrant and impactful. They stand as enduring symbols of honor, discipline, and martial excellence, their values deeply woven into the fabric of Japanese society. Who do you think are the deadliest soldiers? Don't forget to share it with us in the comments.